house. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending upon where you are. Welcome, it's Dr. Sean. And uh, I show up every Sunday in our lecture series tonight. This series is episode three, and the topic is um, One Wrong Move Syndrome. Some of you, as soon as you saw this title, you said, Oh, I know that so well. Oh, I grew up with that, or oh, yes. And some of you are like, well, what exactly is that? So tonight, I'm going to be talking about that. For those that don't know us, we're Project Forgive. We are a viral movement that really focuses on finding more joy and finding more forgiveness. Really, that's really what we're about. I see you guys are showing up. Hello, hello, hello. Of course, I got to do a couple of commercials before I get started on tonight's lecture. I'm just really tickled to be here tonight. One of the things I was thinking about, about like one wrong move syndrome, most of what I talk about or the, in this lecture series on Project Forgive are topics that I wish someone would have taught me about. A lot of the topics that I share, I learned as a PhD and I also learned in my own healing journey. Um, I'm, many folks know I'm an incest survivor. I come from an alcoholic family, you know, yeah, yada, 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 dysfunctional family systems. I remember when, uh, oh gosh, what is his name? I can see his face. Back in the 80s, um, it'll come to me, John something, John Bradshaw, following the Dr John Bradshaw movement, learning about dysfunctional family systems and how do you find some peace and actually forgive family members and forgive those in our lives. And you don't necessarily have to come from trauma to be able to appreciate um, the skills that I teach. It, to me, it's more about being a human being and these are the skills that we need to deal with and the feelings we're having and how do we deal with this. And then in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of all this political insanity and racial insanity, you know, how do we find some peace and some love and I don't know, something besides excruciating agony because <laughs> that's really how I feel. I feel like this is just an agonizing time in our history. So uh, a couple things before I get started on the one wrong move syndrome. And then and I also want to see what you guys are saying. I can see you guys are showing up. Let me put on some glasses so I can see you tonight. For those that are first timers, well, I typically go 20 minutes, 30 minutes on a topic. And uh, a lot of times I'm talking with folks in the chat if they're coming up with ideas and answer questions. And I love giving actual resources and real things you can say and do that support you on your journey of being an amazing human being. Because that's really what Project Forgive is about. So want to shout out our Facebook partner, Agapo. Huge partner of ours. If you get the opportunity to see them, go see them. Uh, anything that I mentioned tonight as far as resources, I will put up those links. Also, Clean Harvest Nutrients. They're a big sponsor of ours. They have the Joy page. And they're all about sustainability on the planet. They have products for soil to enrich the soil. They're really into the keto, really healthy lifestyle. They even have like a keto bakery coming out for Christmas. Huge sponsor of ours. Um, if you're inspired by our masks, we have masks. And um, we're probably going to get ready to do some kind of a special as the holidays approach. We have kindness is contagious. Those are what our masks say if you want to find out about them. I'll put up a link for that too. Also, um, just want to mention our Daily Joy. We have an email that goes out every day for Daily Joy. It's really We really see joy as a habit. And we also have, speaking of joy as a habit, we have Joy is a Habit Facebook group. So if you're looking just to get some stuff in your feed that will bring you joy, make you smile, beautiful videos, touching things that warm your hearts, or beautiful scenery, that's pretty much what we share on Joy is a Habit. It's a public group. You're welcome to join it. I'll put that link up too. Um, also, if you are with a progressive company that hires or does Zooms and brings in phenomenal trainers like us on conversations like forgiveness in the workplace or forgiveness as a leadership tool, we're non-religious, we're non-partisan, we train exquisitely and we're really starting to hone in and focus on women in leadership. So if that's something that inspires you, please reach out to us. I'll put a contact there. Okay, so tonight we're on the one wrong move syndrome. Let's see what you guys are saying. Who knows what that is? What do you think about that? Let's see, I'm just looking, I'm going to breeze through real quick to see if people are saying stuff. Yep, a thriver, Cheryl. I so got it. Totally get it. Totally get it. Just looking really quick. Let's see. You know, most with, uh, yeah, I'm with you, Shelly, about more love and respect. 
And the rules have changed on Facebook. Many times what I would think would be comments, it's actually just telling me, Mary Beth Hood is here. Boyd is here. Carolyn's here. I got it. Hi, Leslie. So I'm looking through to see if people are actually saying something that I need to, to respond to. Mary, I'm with you, girl. Totally get it. Uh, yeah, Bradshaw. You said it, Mimi. I love you. You're so smart. I love that you get it. I love John Bradshaw back in the day when he was like the big thing. Hi, Judy. Good evening. Yeah. Oh, your special needs, Buzz Genie. That's awesome. Yay. Ruth is Holmes is in the house. Hi, Kat. I see you too. Okay, so let me go into the topic and then I'll come back up and see what you guys are saying. If you've got thoughts about the one, one wrong move syndrome, let me go all the way to the bottom of this. Okay, so here's why I'm inspired to talk about this topic for a couple of reasons. Um, so here on Project Forgive, we do something pretty cool because we know that forgiveness is a process and it's different for everybody. And there's stages to forgiveness. There's shock, anger, grief, acceptance, and peace. And there, it is a non-linear process. So you don't just like, okay, I'm shocked. Feel shocked, feel shocked, feel shocked. Okay, now I'm angry. Feel angry, feel angry, feel angry. Okay, now I'm gonna feel grief. Feel grief, feel grief. Then go into acceptance and peace. It does not work that way. We are messy, complicated humans. And it, we could feel shock one day, acceptance the next, come back to anger, then feel grief, and then come all the way back to shock again. It's dependent upon what we're experiencing, what our own personal experience is with whatever happened to us or for us, however you like to look at that. And so we all have different reactions in different ways that we move through the process of healing. And so it would make sense, since we understand that so deeply in Project Forgive, that we might put up content for someone who just had something horrible happen to them and they're really ticked off. Or we might put something up for someone who's feeling some acceptance and some peace and like a really esoteric one on forgiveness that for someone else who hasn't forgiven yet, it just sounds crazy. Do you know what I'm talking about? So we do it to hit all the different levels of where folks would be at. So our motto is always, just like 12-step programs, Take what you like and leave the rest. Take what you like and leave the rest. Now, this past couple of weeks, the one wrong move syndrome happened on Project Forgive with messaging. I'm like, isn't this interesting? And this is what it'll look like. We'll put up a poster and someone will message us and they'll say something like, we are reporting you to Facebook. What you put up is so dumb and so stupid. How dare you? I've been following you for three years and I have to stop following you because that poster was just wrong. And then what I think to myself, probably 10 years ago, that would have really hurt my feelings. Okay, like that would have. Uh, but since then I've done a lot of healing and a lot of growing and not to say I'm insensitive because I'm not, I'm pretty darn sensitive. I just have pretty cool boundaries now, internal boundaries. I've, I've grown and mastered them. And so I was thinking, wow, if that isn't a perfect example of one wrong move syndrome. And that's that feeling like when you do something and you almost feel panic in your chest or you're waiting, like we, you're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Catholics sometimes call it Catholic guilt. I got a great, when I was five years old, when I was five years old, I was born and raised in Detroit, and I went to Carver Elementary School. And this would have been back in the 70s. And uh, my principal, I was in kindergarten. Um, actually, no, I was in the first grade. Um, I was in the first grade, and I was in line to go to lunch. And our principal, his name was uh, Mr. Gillahan. And back then in the day, they would hit kids with paddles. Do you remember those days? You know, I don't know if you're, if you ever experienced that, but it was called corporal punishment for those that have never heard of it. And um, so uh, my biggest terror was t I did not want to get paddled. I did not want to get paddled. And I was such a good girl, if anyone can really relate. I was a really good kid. And I'm um, always very careful and always wanting to do the right thing. So I was in line. And I st and they were very fastidious when I was a little girl. This is back, you weren't even allowed to wear pants when, um, when I was in school, like in the 1971. You had to, girls had to wear dresses. And then I think by the third grade, we were allowed to wear dresses on Fridays. Like Friday was pants day. I think maybe that's where Casual Friday came in. And um, so I'm in line waiting to go 
in for lunch. Remember, I'm six, okay? And I step out of line just to peek, like, you know, peek out of line. And a boy, a safety boy, safety guard was coming by and he ran into me as I was getting out of line and he fell. I just remember being six years old. I remember the feeling of the panic in my chest. Like, oh, I stepped out of line. Now I'm going to be in trouble. And then I could see Mr. Gillihan coming. He was a very, very large man. He was probably, he felt like he was 20 feet tall, you know, when you're six. But he was probably six foot, probably 300 pounds, a very big stocky man. And um, his paddle had holes in it so it would smack even faster, you know. Sorry about the, the graphic detail of that. And when after I tripped that safety guard, Mr. Gillihan started coming, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get paddled. And I just started bawling. I was so terrified. And I'll never forget that panicked feeling. Are you, could, could you guys know what I'm talking about? Have you experienced something like this? Especially, you're like, where did I set my glasses? Oh, here we go. All right, I'm just wanting to make sure you're relating to what I'm saying, that feeling of one wrong move. Let's see if anybody's saying about that. Most of the people are watching. I see you. Yeah, the strap, Shelly, I'm with you. We got hit with a belt. Oh, you're raised in Detroit, Mary? That's awesome. Forgive having to go back through. There's lots of, lots of things popping up tonight, so I'm just going to bear through it. Okay, so we got this one wrong move syndrome. So you kind of get the deal, okay? Here, let me go back up to see if somebody's saying something I need to see. People are saying I can relate. Totally perfect. Perfect. Let me move this all the way up. Got it. All right, so this one wrong move syndrome oops, can also be can be referred to as worry. As adults, we might call it worry, like worrying for the other shoe to drop or just feeling that anxiety or that worry. Um, and it's very black and white thinking, like you do this and that's going to happen. And it has its roots are actually in shame. And um, it happened also this week with my grandson. I have a 10-year-old grandson. And this is what I was talking about today when I was alluding that I was going to be having this conversation tonight. And um, he has my American Express on his Game Boy. Because, you know, once in a while, he's like, Grandma, will you buy me this? I'm like, sure, you know. And uh, the, the boundary, though, is you cannot use it without my permission. That's our boundary. And he called me this week in a panic, in a total panic. And his eyes were all, um, like he was ready to cry, like the tears, you know, like the tears are floating in the eyeball. And his face is so panicked. And I just tapped into being that six-year-old girl. And he was so upset that he accidentally used my American Express card to buy something on Roblox or whatever he did. And and uh, he was so scared. He said, I'm really sorry, Grandma. I really screwed up. I accidentally used your card. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, how much was it? And he's like, $7. And I'm like, oh, honey, then that's your gift today. You get a precious gift today. And the relief, like that instantaneous relief. And we as adults can do that for our kids when they go into that one wrong move syndrome. We can help alleviate them. But then here's the thing, here you are an adult and that you can feel that thing suck into your chest. You know, what do you do to soothe yourself when that happens for you? So that's what I'm gonna be talking about um, and giving some ideas. I also grabbed a few things because a lot of the conversations that I have here on Project Forgive aren't necessarily just about trauma. Um, you know, we all have <laughs> some type of trauma in our family system. Maybe not as severe as incest or as severe as being beaten or child abuse. We all struggle with stuff in our families. It's just part of being a freaking human. It's just the deal. And, um, and how you know that you experience some of that um, one wrong move syndrome, sometimes it can show up as perfectionism. You don't even have to know where it came from. You don't even have to know. And it shows up like that, like that in your chest. So it's like preparing for disasters. That's one way it shows up. Um, and especially for those who had to be super vigilant as kids for safety, I had to be super vigilant. Can anyone relate to that? To make sure the house was staying safe, that I was staying safe because my house wasn't safe, okay? So you're, we have this hyper-awareness sometimes and it's a necessary survival mechanism that keeps us safe in that one wrong move syndrome because we're always present to it. Um, and it's a coping skill though that as an adult, we don't need anymore. We don't need it anymore. And that's why it's so important as parents and grandparents, we help soothe our children through that. Now, when I see Mikey again, I will have this conversation about the one wrong move syndrome. 
Um, and it's not like a one hit wonder. You don't just have that conversation and it's over with. It's something that I will bring up many times with him when I notice if that's going on for him or ask him if that's what's going on for him to normalize that experience as a human because perfectionism is a toughie and I will help alleviate and soothe those feelings as his grandmother, okay? Um, now, as an adult though, what can I do as an adult when I get pulled into that? And so what I thought I would do is I'd give a, a few tips about exploring some new habits because it's really a habit-based solution. It really is. When you consciously, when you go take your unconscious stuff and make it conscious and make conscious habits, that's something that's really powerful that shows up. Let me see what you guys, you guys are saying some good stuff. Yeah, Stephanie, you're so right on. You so can do that for your kids. You've seen it happen in classrooms. I know that you have. You can feel that for people and you can relate with the perfectionism, Shelly, I got it. All right, Mary's saying yes, yes, you guys are relating, perfect. Okay, I'll come back here and see what you're saying because I got a couple of thoughts that I wanna give you tonight. Um, ways to deal with the one wrong move syndrome. Um, and before I talk about creating these habits, I talk about neurological pathways almost every single day because we go live in the habit of joy every single day. And um, there's a reason why, especially right now with all the strife, and our brain, is very similar to a car in the snow. When the tire gets stuck in the snow and it starts spinning, and I love this analogy, it's a great analogy, when that tire is spinning, your tire is just going deeper and deeper and deeper to being stuck. And we operate like that, operate like that with worry and thoughts. And the mechanisms or the new habits that we create for ourselves as adults to soothe us is how do we get out of that spinning tire place, that one wrong move syndrome, for instance. And, um, and there's things that we can do. One of them is, is just making it conscious, like, oh crap, I'm in one wrong move syndrome. That's just one way to deal with it. Another one is, oh, I am stuck in a neurological pathway that's sucking me down the hole. A good example of that might be, um, I limit how much news I watch, because news is painful. I mean, really painful right now, right? And uh, I don't care what side of the fence you're on, it doesn't matter to me. It's painful. And sometimes I find myself being pulled to go check news. And it almost feels like an addiction would be a word I would use. Like almost like I cannot not go look. And to me that occurs like, and please, I'm, I should probably be careful of the words I say because I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a PhD in communication. Um, I, it literally is not addiction, It's more, although some would argue that. It's more about being in the habit of having my tire spinning and I'm in a panic and I'm worried and is there more to be worried about? I better go check. You know what I'm I know you guys know because this is part of being human too. So how do I get out of that spinning wheel? And so I wrote a few things down that I thought would be really helpful. And um, some of them, like we know, like yeah, I know that you know that I know that you know that I know, okay? And sometimes we forget about that. And um, my husband's a big meditator. He's really big into meditation. That is so not my thing. But then I thought, well, wait a minute. How do people really even have the experience of meditation? Meditation is different for everybody. Um, it can be very meditative to work on jigsaw puzzles, being quiet, being present. Um, you can do that on a walk. Notice the heels of your feet touching the ground and your toes lifting up. Sometimes I do that with a quiet walk. So there's lots of ways you can just take a few minutes to be present. And, um, and doing it consistency, consistently is really big for um, emotional regulation, those consistent habits. And savoring. I love the word savoring, making the unconscious conscious. I love looking at in the conversation of food. Have you ever just like ate of your, it's your favorite food? We just went to, what's the name of that restaurant? We just went to, um, it's a Japanese steakhouse. Crap, I can't think of the name. Wasabi, it's called wasabi. And uh, I just trained the last two days. So whenever I train, a big treat is for us to get wasabi to go. We haven't really eaten in a restaurant yet because of COVID. Um, but we'll get some, you know, really nice to-go uh, to food. And savoring the deliciousness of that food, the, the fried rice, um, the hibachi chicken, the hibachi shrimp, and really slowly eating it. And have you ever just been in like a frenzy and you just eat, 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 eat? You didn't even really taste the food because you're thinking about other stuff. You're not even present to your food. Savoring is a, is a part of being 
present. One of my favorite people around food. Anybody else have food issues or <laughs> struggled with their weight? Um, I have pretty much my whole life. And it's one of the ways that I've always used to self-soothe. Something that I'm always working on. I'll probably work on it till the day I die. And um, I love a gal named Janine Roth. I'll put her name up here. She has a book called When Food is Love, and she really talks about this notion of savoring. I've even gone to her five-day retreat. Um, so I'm going to put her up. I think she's just a fabulous resource. She's been writing books and doing seminars for more than 30 years. She's just phenomenal. And then when a, when a big wave hits, so big wave of the one wrong move syndrome, like it just hits you so hard. And this happened to me last, the last time it really happened to me was I was at a speaking event last November, um, this before COVID, and it was just, I'm going to swear, it was just a shit show, excuse my language, it was a shit show. You know, the, the, I was being sponsored by a very large automotive, I was doing apology and forgiveness, I pride myself on being so gracious and loving to everyone when I go to an event, making everything okay. They're dem what, what happened at this event was just one horrible thing after another. And even something as basic as the PowerPoint wasn't working, and I play a lot of videos, and I'm just like, this sucks. You know, like, like that's the, the most severe I got, you know? <laughs> it really, like this is really crappy, you guys. This ain't working. And the lady in charge was livid. Um, she was so mad at me. Um, told her She told me that I was inappropriate. And I'm just like, oh, I could just feel my chest, just like when I was six years old, in line. Like I did, I said, I said, this really sucks. One wrong move. And I'm like, oh my gosh, am I going to lose my sponsorship? You know, and I was in a lot of pain for about, two days and one of the things I decided when I was in that hook or that trigger because the feelings didn't warrant what happened in the moment they really didn't it was really about old stuff and a bunch of things things combined sorry to get my my uh printer and so you know after when I got back talked to my sponsor he's like oh Dr. Sean are you kidding you're one of the nicest people we know we know if you were upset there was a reason to be we're sorry this happened and this happened and this happened they were just wonderful they don't even want to work with this group anymore which actually quite frankly is appropriate it was really inappropriate what happened um what they did in my estimation as a professional and that's and I've gosh I've probably spoken to thousands of groups and I've never had an issue ever in the thousands of times I've spoken don't get me wrong crap happens better PowerPoint doesn't work things happen it was the culmination of everything there and the energy of it and it just it, it was just off the whole thing just sucked and um, and so I chose to ride that big wave and I remember the two days I was in it and my husband saying you know hey Johnny you know this is, you know, this is way outside how you normally feel. I says, I know I'm grieving something bigger. I just want to lay with it and stay with it. And, um, and there's something about being deeply misunderstood or accused of something I didn't do. There's, there's many pieces to that. And I'm hoping you guys are relating to what I'm saying. So choosing to ride it out is also a really good thing. And when, when I choose to ride something out, when I'm hooked in something, I remind myself, like consciously, I'm gonna ride this out. This isn't gonna last forever. I know this has a lot to do with the past. Am I brave enough to just be with this and let it ride its storm? And can I be solid grounded, standing still in the midst of the trigger or the storm? Does that make sense? Let me see what you guys are saying. I see you guys, lots of you here, perfect. For those just joining us, our topic tonight is one wrong move syndrome. That one wrong move. Let's see. People are saying stuff. Oh, well, how nice, Lynn. Yep, Stephanie, you're relating. Perfect. Okay. Because um, the reason I share this, and I love that you said that, Lynn, too. And it's cool when you can get to a point where you say it to yourself and you parent yourself so powerfully and so lovingly and it's so good and even when someone sees a poster they don't like on project forgive and they say something they because i get i probably get it 10 times a week seriously okay well we reach millions i mean that makes sense 
I'm never coming to your page again. I can't believe you said that. They would say it's a political post when it wasn't even intention. And even the opposite of what I believe in politics, so that was never the intention. So it was all their stuff. So a lot of times when I see that, I just bless them and just say, oh, sweetie, I'm sorry, that was your experience. Yeah, and if you need to go, rock and roll. Find a page that really meets your needs. It's all good. And with no shame over here, making sense. For those that missed that story, we post hundreds and hundreds of posts a week. And if you've been following us for a year and we do one post yesterday that you hated and you say you're never going to come to our page anymore, that's the that exonifies what a want, one wrong move syndrome is. You make you can do wonderful things and then one thing. It's almost, I think of like a wife in the 50s who did all the cooking and she cooks and she cooks and she cooks. And then one time she burns the roast and then the partner, you know, back then it, we would have used the word husband, and her partner just starts complaining at her, you know, what a horrible thing it was that she burnt the roast. You know, it's that one thing that we hone in on that, right? So all these things that I talked about today, savoring, finding things to be present, reminding yourself to ride it out and that it's not going to last forever, practicing that when you see a child possibly going through that, and asking and, and having those conversations that actually heals you in the journey of it. And that really is why we do the joy thing every day. Pretty much at noon I show up. It's Sometimes it's random during the day because like I trained on Friday and Saturday so I couldn't be here right at noon. And um, it's actually a consistent habit for me and my neurological pathways um, to find moments of joy in the midst of all this because some days, you know, I just don't want to. I don't want to. Can anyone relate? Let's see what you guys are saying. Yeah, Ruth, you're so spot on. Ah, uh, you're so sweet, Jean. I appreciate you, Miss Jeannie. Yeah. But, you know, it makes sense, too. Like, if you have certain ideas of what forgiveness is, and, um, and then you come to our page and we share something about... I don't know, um, forgive and forget is a myth. Like I deeply in research shows forgiving and forgetting is a myth. It's not about forgiving and forgetting. Um, it's much more complicated than that. We are complicated humans, right? So next week, the topic is holding dichotomous feelings at the same time, like ho having grief and joy at the same moment. You know, I was reading a stat about all the, the fam people that have lost people to COVID more than two million people right now in the U.S. have a direct link to someone dying from COVID. Two million people. That means collectively in our culture, more than two million people are grieving right now with a loss. Maybe they didn't get to say goodbye to them. Maybe they didn't have a funeral. So it's even more painful when you look at the circumstances that are going on right now. And having grief and also finding joy, how do you mix the two that's going to be the topic next week next sunday night at 7 p.m okay big shout out to agapo make sure you go visit them clean harvest nutrients we love you their page is the joy page which i love and if you find this broadcast helpful please share it because when you share us you really make a difference for us and our partners in the programs that we provide okay all right all right you guys you have an amazing exquisite beautiful sunday and i'll see you tomorrow for a random moment of joy Okay, take care. Thanks for making my night.